Today, I'm going to briefly discuss energy storage and why it's rapidly becoming an important aspect of the renewable energy industry. Energy storage systems are essentially just large batteries that can provide power to a home or to a building. They are ideal for remote and off-grid applications. However, since they can discharge energy depending on time of use schedules, they are becoming more popular. This ability helps users to greatly reduce their electricity bills. Storage system insulation is taking off in certain states like California because of grid blackouts during the dry season and Hawaii where homes get a lot of sun but they aren't allowed to export any power to the grid. As you can see, there are several companies currently producing battery backup systems. I'm sure you're all familiar with LG Chem and Tesla, but there are over a dozen different companies currently producing energy storage systems. I would say that most people who buy battery storage really want to know how safe they are. The main question here being, can a battery catch on fire? Yes, they certainly can catch on fire. However, the chances of it happening are extremely low, as so long as it is installed properly. Thermal runaway is an event in which a battery begins to overheat, eventually leading to a fire. Fortunately, as battery technology improves, the risk of a fire occurring goes down. If I get an energy storage system, will I be able to keep running my air conditioner, heater, hot tub, and everything else just like normal? The honest answer is no. Even if you get what's called a whole home backup system, you will still have to be mindful of your energy consumption. In reality, you should only run the essentials like the refrigerator and the lights. This practice is more important for those stuck in a blackout for several days. The other reason is that draining the battery down and then charging it back up every single day is not great for the health of the battery. Are there any regulations and standards for energy storage in the US? Yes, there are, and as time goes on, we will see more requirements put into place. As of now, there are a few UL listings as well as an NFPA standard that battery producers can get. The purpose of these certifications and standards is to minimize the risk of an energy storage system to their consumers. Renewable energy is rapidly overtaking fossil fuels as the world's primary source of power. Technological developments are allowing us to live more sustainably. Home battery systems are just the next big step on the journey to energy independence. It's been projected that the demand for battery storage is going to increase significantly in the next few years. This graph shows the rising level of energy storage systems installed per year since 2013. The market size for residential storage was around 6.3 billion in 2019 and is estimated to reach over 15 billion by 2024. Battery technology is constantly improving and as the technology improves, the relative cost of energy storage will decline. When the price goes down, sales go up, especially in areas where utility companies just keep raising the rates. Something similar to this is already happening with PV systems. At first, they were so expensive, most people couldn't afford them. Then the technology improved and systems became more affordable while also becoming more efficient. Now solar is entering a golden age and energy storage is right behind it. Time of use is one of the main reasons that energy storage is becoming so popular. What exactly is time of use? It's a variable rate schedule that utility companies create to charge their customers for electricity consumption. These schedules are generally split up into a few categories, on-peak, mid-peak, and off-peak, or sometimes just on-peak and off-peak. In the US, there are dozens of different rate schedules because every utility company creates their own which means to say that there's no national standard. The on-peak rates are always the highest and typically occur during the late afternoon, early evening hours when people are just getting home from work and are consuming the most power. As PV and energy storage become more popular, utility companies have been increasing their peak rates to help mitigate their losses. For this reason, the demand for energy storage will only continue to grow. Certainly the most obvious benefit to having a battery backup system is the ability to stay powered during blackouts and in off-grid situations. But if you think of your system as an investment, then energy storage would greatly help you to avoid having to pay peak rate prices. As you can see from this graph, without battery backup, the PV system will export all surplus power to the grid during the day. Then in the late evening, the home will be consuming grid power, but at the high on-peak rate. 
The exception to this is in Hawaii where you aren't allowed to export any power to the grid. This is probably why battery backups are so popular there. But most customers with PV and no storage end up having to buy back the power that they exported during the day at a higher rate than they sold it for. And this negatively offsets the savings they earned by getting PV in the first place. But with energy storage, the PV system can be charging up the battery with the excess power in the daytime so that in the evening, the battery can discharge energy instead of power having to be purchased from the utility. For this reason, it's important for the inverter to have a programmable time of use function that allows customers to set their own energy discharge schedule based on their utility company. There are several types of batteries out there and even a few different kinds of lithium ion batteries. Phones, laptops, electric vehicles, power tools, and energy storage systems all use lithium ion. Lithium ion batteries have the highest energy discharge rate, meaning that they can dish out the most power compared with other kinds of batteries. Lithium ion batteries have great thermal and chemical stability, meaning to say that they stay cooler and don't experience thermal runaway as easily. When it comes to maintenance, lithium ion wins again. There's no wonder that lithium ion is the choice of most energy storage producers. The two main kinds of lithium ion batteries that most energy storage systems have are lithium iron phosphate, LFP, and nickel manganese cobalt oxide, NMC. Iron phosphate is ideal for ground-mounted energy storage systems. First, LFP batteries are less susceptible to thermal runaway and aren't as dangerous when they're damaged compared to NMC. LFP batteries have a longer lifespan than cobalt oxide and are also less toxic. In stationary applications, weight isn't much of an issue, therefore iron phosphate is the ideal choice. NMC batteries are lighter in weight than iron phosphate and also have a higher energy capacity. For these reasons, they are a better choice for wall mounting than LFP. The two main ways of connecting an energy storage system to solar are referred to as AC coupling and DC coupling. The main difference between these two types comes down to the path that energy takes once it's been generated by the PV modules. I'll briefly explain the differences between AC and DC coupling, as well as the pros and cons of each method. In an AC coupled system, power flows from the panels to the inverter where it gets converted to AC before going to the home or building. It can then go to a separate battery system through a converter that changes it back into DC. The energy storage device in this case will typically have its own inverter that will allow the battery to change its DC energy back into AC to feed the loads independently of the PV inverter. Tesla, Sunan, and Generac sell AC coupled systems. There are a few key advantages to AC coupling First is the ease of installation since they require less time and labor to install. This also means they generally have lower upfront costs. However, since energy gets converted from DC to AC and then back into DC, these systems are not as efficient. DC coupled systems have been around for quite a while. In the past, DC coupled systems were primarily found in remote and off-grid situations, such as boats and cabins. But now with the development of the hybrid inverter and the improvement of lithium ion technology, DC coupled systems are back in style. In a DC coupled system, power flows directly from the PV to the batteries through some sort of charge controlling device. DC coupled systems are one, more efficient due to fewer energy conversions, and two, more modular, meaning that you can add additional batteries over time. The disadvantages are that they tend to be tougher to install since you have to put in a hybrid inverter and auto transformer and are usually more expensive. The Solus Hybrid Inverter Series is designed to work with DC coupled energy storage devices. The inverter is directly connected to the PV array, the grid, and the battery through some sort of battery management system. Sometimes this is referred to as a high voltage system since the DC voltage going to the battery is relatively high. Compared with AC coupling, this is the more efficient method of storing and releasing solar energy. The hybrid is also connected to a backup loads panel through an auto transformer. In this type of setup, the battery and inverter are one intimate system. LG Chem and BYD both have DC coupled products that are compatible with the hybrid series. AC coupled systems, such as Tesla and Sunan, consist of a battery, auto transformer, and inverter. They are not directly connected to the PV string inverter, but are instead connected to the home. 
the PV system and the battery system essentially share the home and need only to recognize when the other is generating so that there isn't an accidental oversurge of power. The Solus single phase string inverter series is capable of working alongside most AC coupled solutions, just as it is. The Solus hybrid series is currently compatible with the LG Chem Resu H and the BYD B Box series. LG Chem is a well recognized name and has a reputation for making very high quality products. The LG Chem batteries come with a 10 year warranty and are a bit cheaper relative to most of their competitors. The Resu H line is designed to be mounted on the wall next to the hybrid inverter. BYD has created a system that is highly modular. Their battery stacks consist of blocks that can be added over time. Since customers aren't obligated to buy the whole thing all at once, it's a more cost-effective solution. The BYD battery system stays on the ground as it is much heavier being LFP. Residential energy storage is just the tip of the iceberg. Commercial and utility scale storage systems are also on the rise. Here are a few photos that I found of large scale battery systems. Just imagine a world where massive battery plants store solar generated power and then discharge it to the grid at nighttime. The energy storage market is still incredibly young, but it's growing very fast. Just about every company in the renewable energy industry is either already partnered with a battery producer or is developing their own energy storage solution. Our hybrid inverter series is going to be very popular with those looking to get the type of system that gives them the best return on their investment. I think that our hybrid line will grow and could even eventually branch into commercial and utility scale applications. As energy storage technology improves and becomes more efficient as well as more affordable, the demand for battery backup will just continue to rise. And that's all I have for now. Thanks for tuning in.